uh, she told me, she said, baby, don't you never let no man put their hands on you. I thank God that my son understands not to put his hands on a woman. He treated me as if I was one of the students, but he knew I was his daughter. Here, I decided to do Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, everybody. They say that we're not gonna be live right now, but I'm telling them, why not? Because when you're live, you're live, you got your legs that wiggle, your arms that wiggle, and you can just dance around and say, I'm alive! Welcome to the show, I'm Jeffrey Hill, and I'm a little bit crazy. Today, today I've got a guest with me. You'll never believe this. You look at her and you go, I can't believe this. But she has spent 18 years building those giant big rigs on the freeway, those semis. It's very interesting, but that's not what we're gonna talk about. I just found it interesting. Her name is Gwen Evans. She's from Louisville, Kentucky. She has had 15 roles in 15 theatrical projects on the actual stage in theaters. She's been in three feature films, several sitcoms, a bunch of commercials, and she's fabulous. So. Let me introduce you to Gwen Evans in just a moment. Poof! Two most important things. Time and money. Anything that wastes both doesn't get to do it twice. Are you looking for ways to make more money? Are you good at sales? Do you have the drive and the ambition that it takes to get the job done? Well then come join our team here at TVPBN. We offer great incentives. Work your own hours from ever, wherever you want. Small town, big city, my favorite, the quiet island beach. It all works. Go to TVPBN.com today. Click on the link to become an affiliate. My name is Chris Mayberry, and I'm excited to be working with you. Hi, my name is George, and I'm here to talk to you about. Oh! Ah! Ah! and family and all of the people that I love all over the world. I'm so excited to have you all here with me. It just makes me feel all warm and squishy inside. Tonight, we're talking to Gwen Evans, everybody. Welcome Gwen Evans to the set right here. I'll stand up. There she is. Hello. Welcome. You're on my 85 screen. Totally love it. I can hear you. It's awesome. So you are in Kentucky. Correct. I always wanted to go there because I have a love for baseball, and of course, you can't talk about Louisville, Kentucky without mentioning baseball. It's like the and home the of the slugger. And the Derby, absolutely. Two really <laughs> wonderful things. Have you ever gone to the Derby? I mean, I can't imagine you wouldn't. Yes, I have. What's that? But I didn't is? win. You didn't win? Oh, no. Oh, no. I guess that's why you're still working at the factory. Yeah, it kind of happens that way. I didn't win either. That's why I'm still sitting here. But I got a higher chair today. They, I said I need a high chair, and they said you need a bib too. So I got a higher <laughs> chair, and that's it. It feels better. My my feet don't touch the floor. Look. <laughs> so, you have experience in theater, like tons of experience. I think I think I've been in two stage plays myself, but you've been in fifteen. Fifteen. I started seven years ago and different directors come to see plays and they will tell me to come audition for their plays and that's it just been a blessing. Really? So they see you on the stage and they request you? Yes, well, uh, I will have to go and audition for some, some I didn't have to audition. Sometimes they just say, hey, we have the perfect role for you. Correct. 
That means you're one heck of a talent. That, or I always play the bad girl. I don't know why. You seem nice <laughs> enough. But that's what they really, because that was my next question, is what roles do they, they give you? It's the bad girl roles? The bad girl roles. I'm either um, the mean sister, uh, the mean boss. Um, just, I'm always the mean girl. I'm like, I want to play the nice person, but no. Mm -hmm. Huh. That is interesting. So they stereotype you. A little bit, but I, I have did different things um, just so I would not be put in a little small box. How do you, I mean, with 15 theatrical productions, that means in the last seven years, you're doing two per year. Mm -hmm. I yes. can't even remember what I'm going to say two seconds before I say it. So how do you, what, do you have a trick for remembering all the lines? Um, I try to study uh, a little bit every day, but the thing, the thing I do, I try to put myself, um, I read it as if it was real life, as if it was happening. That way I can get into that character. So I think they call that method acting? Yes. So do you even carry the character home with you at times or only on the set? Um, only How deep do on you the go? set. Uh, uh, on the set, but... A lot of times it helps me to like put on the different clothes and become that character. When I put on clothes, it seems like I can become that character. I, sometimes I may wear a wig or something, but um, just small tricks help me to become that character. Do you take that to work also and you're down supervising the line and you're like, yo, get your butt in there. I want to, but I can't. I want to. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, but um, a lot of them know I, I do plays, and so I try, you know, I might do a and little bit. And then they don't believe you. They say, oh, we know that's just play acting. Mm-hmm, 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 especially when and I'm being you, mean. And then you're like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're fired. Whatever. <laughs> do, they, do, they, do you get to fire people, too? No. No, um, I let HR take care of that. Oh, you just get the dirty jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at this uh, semi-factory, what have you been doing for the last, all these years? I mean, in fact, what was your, out of all the things you did building semis, mm -hmm. what have you liked the most? Um, I think building the door. The door? The door. <laughs> it's strange what is with the interesting door. interesting about the door? Uh, only because a lot of stuff I did is inside or it's covered, but the door is on the outside. You can see it. Oh, so you're talking about the outside surface with a paint on it, or are you talking about the, mm -hmm. the fabric on the inside? So you painted the outside of these doors and all the fixtures no. that go on it. No, the door, it wouldn't be at the paint at that time, it'd be a raw material, it'd just be mm -hmm. just the door. Uh, but, you know, just, I guess, just because I can see the door, everything else, like I said, is either up on the hood or covered. And I couldn't, you can't see it, you know, but the door, I don't know. I, it's kind of like the door, because it's like a challenge, I guess. Well, it appealed to your artistic side, apparently, because you can mm -hmm. make it beautiful, someone might see that, you know that someone's gonna see it every single time. I mean, you can't mm -hmm. miss the door. The door is where the <laughs> logo goes. I mean, that's the Peterbilt that's and Kenworth. Mm -hmm. Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks. Yeah. So every time we see a Peterbilt or a Kenworth, we're looking at a door that you made some time ago. Yes. I'm gonna have to go look at mine. I've got a sem I've got a <laughs> semi. Except, no, mine's an international. It's not a Peterbilt, Peterbilt or a Kenworth. Come to think of it. Mm -hmm. So that, but that would still, but the door you're saying could be from a Peterbilt or a Kenworth factory? Yes. Really? Yes. So I could literally be driving around in a semi. No, no, no. Where you no, no, I'm sorry. I, no, no. Peterbilt will have a Peterbilt door and Kenworth will have a Kenworth door. Yes. Only. 
Okay, so international doors were not necessarily compatible with those two other brands. No. Oh, man. I was going to go home and look for your signature. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is fascinating. What made you mm -hmm. get that job in the first place years ago? Just you needed money um, or what? Needed money. And uh, actually, I was working at Frito-Lay. And they closed. And so my next thing was to... Work at Dynacraft. And so now you're there, but after all these years, you've, you've you're created a, uh, an acting career. Mm -hmm. Are you at the point that people are paying you yet? Yes. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Yes. Very, it's, very nice. Yeah. At first, I was doing it because um, I was new at it, and I wasn't sure. And, uh, but over time, I need to get paid now. So for those watching, what's the secret to getting paid as an actress? Um, contract. Meaning? Have a contract with them. Um, have a contract with them letting you know that they're going to pay you and you will be showing up. But how do you get them, how do you even establish yourself as someone who's worthy to be paid? Um, I guess my work kind of Show proof. Stands up for itself. Mm -hmm. Do you have an mm -hmm. acting reel that, that, that you send around to people or? I do. And I, I do. I do. I didn't have time today, but I do have one. All righty. No problem at all. So you landed three feature films. What, yes. what are these films? Um, the one is well, er everything I'm doing is in the process. It hadn't came out yet, but it will be out. Um, one thing I know about love is one. The other one is uh, Minimum Wage Brother. And another one is called Strap. Um, they are all independent uh, films with three different uh, directors. And hopefully, um, you might see it on Hulu or Amazon somewhere, hopefully. That's the dream of every single filmmaker out there to get in those platforms. Yes. Netflix, Amazon Prime. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. most definitely. Even myself, I'd love to be on there at once, once or twice at some point in my life. Now, I, I have did two um, Lifetime, but I was just, uh, you know, I didn't have any speaking roles. So on these three features, you actually have speaking roles, but yet again as the bad girl. Correct. The bad Even girl. In the films. Even in the films. Wow, we have to do <laughs> something about that. But we'll do something about that really quick after this message. Poof. Here on the show with me, Jeffrey Hill, we are always looking for new people to come on the show as a guest and share their stories. I love to talk to actors, singers, producers, filmmakers, authors, and tons of other people. If you or somebody you know would be a great guest for my show or any other shows on the network, just go to tvpbn.com forward slash the show prep and fill out the application today. I look forward to seeing you. I don't like being hung up on. If you hang up on me again, I'm coming in after you. Listen, mister, I'm going to have to call the police if you keep calling me. Call them. I don't think they'll get here fast enough. and I have a question. I had no idea, the audience won't be quiet, <laughs> I had no idea that there would be a film um, industry in Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, we always know about the Kentucky Derby and the Louisville Slugger Bat Factory, but a film mm -hmm. industry, especially one that pays you, it just mm -hmm. never occurred to me. 
Have yes. you ever considered going to Vancouver, Canada, or Toronto, or you know, Canada would, or Hollywood, or Bollywood, or Night Nollywood, or uh, any place like that? I would actually like to go to Atlanta or Chicago. They have a lot of opportunities um, in Chicago, and I do know Atlanta. And but Atlanta's of course, a lot closer. I, yes. I've got a friend who uh, is a really, really excellent DP in Atlanta. His name is Reggie mm -hmm. Miller. Yes. Reggie Miller is mm -hmm. just, he's incredible. Go, to, go on to Facebook and look it up. Reggie Miller, R-E-G-G-I-E. -E. I sure will. He, he does a ton of music videos. Mm -hmm. Reggie Miller, really great guy. And he's in Atlanta with a beautiful studio, no less. I need to. I need to meet Mr. Reggie. Yep, you do. You do, most definitely. Especially when it comes to the music video world. You won't be mm -hmm. cast as the uh, bad girl, I believe. What would you want uh, to be cast as? Oh, uh, see. What do you think you'd be really good at besides the bad girl? Um, because I normally do the drama. So I want to do a little comedy, just a little bit. I think I'm funny, but it may just be me thinking I'm funny. <laughs> well, it happens to all of us. I think I make good jokes, but everybody knows that's a lie. <laughs> yeah, so well, if, if comedy is your deal, think of the, a comedy line or a comedy scene and close your eyes and put yourself in that mode and give it to me. We've got plenty of time. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to think, what would I do? Oh, see, I need my dress up. Oh, that's kind of helped me there. Well, that's why you got to close your eyes and pretend that the green dress is okay. now the... Okay, let me close my eyes, let me think. And then you describe the scene to me. What are you wearing? Okay, uh, I'm an old lady. I have a wig on. Um. I have a black dress on and I'm going to the church, but I don't want anyone in the church to hug me. So I'm gonna kind of snub them a little bit. Okay. You want me to act it out? Absolutely. Cause now okay. I know who you're talking about. That's like okay. Medea going to church, except she wants everyone to get out of the way. Yeah. They'll be saying, Hey, how you doing? Ooh, baby. Uh, um, uh, I, I don't talk to strangers, let alone uh, touch anybody. <clears throat> Whew. What? You want some money for the offering? Uh -huh. I think you better ask God himself. I don't know. That wasn't good. <laughs> It's fun, though. It's fun. It's a good start. Well, it, I mean, it's, it's really hard to do that. More. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like odd trying to do it. I wish I had some feedback. Maybe you can help me. Well, I've seen people do that, though. Exactly what you did in That's, real life. That wasn't, yeah, that wasn't good. Except that I can see, because I've seen that actually happen in real life, so I know what it looks like, and it was, it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about it, I gave you, what, three <laughs> seconds to prepare. <laughs> you're not dressed like you're going to church. You don't have the giant hat on, because I can imagine a lady going to the church like that. She's got to wear the with huge the Bible. Hat. You know, you have to hold the Bible. Yeah, hold the Bible like this. She's really, <laughs> this, and, that, and the body language of that, you know, she's really closed. She's really into herself. Mm -hmm. Avoiding yeah. all the seats. And then the, that line, I think you have to ask God himself. Really ask God himself. That's definitely a push you back. <laughs> That's fun. Very cool. That's okay. I could have did better, but I roll with it. Well, you know, three seconds of preparation. <laughs> so what are you... We have a clip here today. Yes. But I'm not certain what it is because they stick me in the chair here and just say talk. What, okay, what is the clip is, we're looking at? It's the Stop Domestic Violence. It's like a small commercial. Were you, were, were you a victim in this or were you the, the... 
I'm the victim. Oh, you're the and good girl in this one. So you did play a good girl in this one. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess I could say I was a good girl, yeah. Well, if you were the victim, you really probably wouldn't be the bad person. No, so you're right. I was a good person this time. Thank you. It's about time. You finally got your comeuppance. And you did your own makeup. <laughs> yes. Do you normally do your own makeup? Normally, I do not. And the person uh, that supposed to did the makeup, uh, they didn't show up one time. So I said, I got it. And I made it work. You'll see. So what we're going to see here is the entire domestic violence commercial, or is this a grouping of different things? Uh, just the commercial. How did you get involved in this commercial in the first place? Because it's quite a bit different from, you know, theater. Um, actually, one of the directors that I normally work with, with plays, she was doing a, um, she's trying to get into more of the community thing. And um, so this is one of the ways we was trying to kind of um, step into the community and stop certain things like violence, um, cancer. We did um, something on cancer, uh, diabetes, a lot of things people talk about but don't talk about. So just trying to bring uh, encouragement to the community and awareness to the community. Have you yourself personally been a victim of domestic violence? Yes, um, that's why it was easy to go into that mode. So it became real. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I took those same emotions because um, a lot of times, um, and that helps when you, I hold a lot of emotions. So when it comes to like cry on the dime, I can almost cry on the dime most of the time. Because your emotions are right on the edge all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would uh, make it really easy to act out certain roles, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's watch Especially this clip. Okay. You want That was intense. Mm -hmm. That was really intense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy cow. Did this kind of a scene happen to you personally? No, not personally. Not that to that extent, because you're still living, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. But you yourself yes. are a survivor of domestic violence. Yes. Did it go to mm -hmm. the to the whole uh, the whole uh, restraining orders and all that stuff and 
Well, it actually happened when I was young and um, actually it was my first boyfriend. And I should have seen signs early because he was um, like, he didn't want me to be around my friends anymore. Um, it got to the point where people at school wouldn't even talk to me or if I sit on the bus, nobody else but him sat with me and he was like controlling and got to the point where when I did try to leave him that's when he started become abusive and violent and you know physically he'll fight me and at that time because I seen my mother and father fighting when I was a kid I thought really you know that's what people do so I fought back with him until um, the word got back to my grandmother and uh, she told me, she said, baby, don't you never let no man put their hands on you. And she said, if he touch you again, you let somebody know we're going to call the police. Um, because that's not, that's not what you, a person is supposed to do. He need to keep his hands to himself. And after that day, when she told me that, I no longer, uh, <laughs> I no longer dealt with it anymore. So that was the first and last time I had a man to put his hands on me. That is really good. Your grandma was wise. Yes. I just, I, well, I personally am not a victim of that, but it is, it was such an emotionally moving commercial. At first I'm watching it going, okay, okay. But your action, your, uh, your role in this seems so real. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing that I, well, I've personally never been through this, so I don't know what it looks like in real, in real life, but it just was so real, it affected me. Good. You, you could turn this into a cause of your own. Well, it's been a few years, but you said, I'm standing up for myself from now on. Yes. Um, I think, you know, um, a lot of times growing up, when you see your parents fighting, I, at one point of time, I did think that was the normal, that it was okay for a man to fight a woman, you know. Um, you know, it's okay to fight them back, you know, all the fighting and, you know, physical, domestic type things, you know. Um, but my grandmother got to the point, like I said, she heard about it, and she's like, no, that's not right. That's not how it's supposed to go. They supposed to keep their hands to themselves, and you keep your hands to yourself. And after that day, you know, I no longer dealt with him. Um, you know, other actions happened to him. Um, but, you know, years later, um, as of right now, we are good friends, but he apologized for how he treated me. And um, so, you know, but he would never, and no other man would ever put their hands on me again. I find that astounding, but not because we are products of the environment that we live in. Mm -hmm. And if that's the environment you live in, it would be easy to see like what you said, mm -hmm. believing that that's just normal. Mm -hmm. And yet when you're in first grade and you go to school, if you, if you get in fights, everyone says, stop. So how, how could that be considered normal, you know, when you're a teenager and older? Well, even like I said, a kid seeing my mother fight and my father fight, um, my, her neighbor, which was her, my mother's best friend, her and her husband would fight. And the lady down the street, her and her husband fight. And so, you know, you didn't think it was a big deal. But, you know, as I go back and, and think about the things in the, those times, they were wrong. And a lot of times they happened, um, most men get paid on that Friday and the wife wants some money to pay the bills and the man might be, you know, my daddy, you know, he, he was an alcoholic and, um, that's was the trigger. You know, um, he might've been drunk. My mother confronted him about money and that's the fight. And also that happened to my neighbor, her husband get paid Friday and he's drunk and that's the fight. What if the, um, I can't, the, what if the aggressor was your own son mm -hmm. and he's an adult? Cause I mm -hmm. believe you said earlier, 
before we started the show, you said you have a son in his 20s. Yes, my he son is 29. The, if your 29-year-old son was the aggressor and he's a fully grown legal adult, you're still his mother, though. <laughs> what would you do? I mean, how could you, how, how could you affect that at, when he's 29? Well, you know, my son, him and I both have had this conversation because actually um, I have three grandkids and, you know, he, one of his um, children's mother had tried to fight him. And I'm like, Trill, you can't put your hands on her. Do not touch her. You let the law deal with her. And I talked to him and told him, you know, stories about me growing up, how it affected me and you know what what's right and what's wrong so you know i i thank god that my son understands not to put his hands on a woman and so he hasn't you haven't had to deal no. with this mm -mm. that's a good son then mm -hmm. but then he also grew up in an environment with a mother who recognized it early on mm -hmm. and set the example yes i had a, a grandmother that you know um she she helped me out a lot growing up and then you know um years later um my mother you know um during the time my father was uh her and my father was married um like i said he was an alcoholic and a lot of times you know women don't recognize that they've been abused you know they thinking like i like i thought it was okay you know even though you know she had said the same thing to my mother that it's not right but you know a lot of times women leave out you know they don't they won't leave out of fear and different other you know other reasons behind but uh years later my mother finally you know she ended up leaving my father and then she ended up remarrying to a real good man and you know both of them has passed now but uh you know she i i'm glad that she found out what love really was about because her second husband he gave her love. He showed her what love was all about. How, uh, how can a person in this situation develop the courage to make that change, to, to separate themselves from the aggressor? How, I mean, uh, um, I, don't know how to ask, I don't know how to ask the question. And I think I know what you're trying to say. Um, sometimes people stay in situation for certain reasons. Um, you know, uh, some women be abused mentally, you know, and the guy have her in her, in her head, think, making her think that she's nothing, that she won't get anything better. So she just settled. So a lot of people just settle or it might be lifestyle. Some women um, have men with money. They don't want to leave that lifestyle, so they stay and put up with it. You know, some men beat them. Some women, uh, some men cheat on that woman, but she loved that lifestyle. Um, it's just about, you know, my thing is, I have to make decisions in life to want to be happy. And if I'm in a situation with a man and he's not making me happy, I leave. Um, you know, I was married. I had a, a good husband, um, but now I'm a, a widow. My husband passed away. Um, but, you know, before he passed away, you know, I knew what love was about. You know, um, previous relationships, I, I have had stayed in a situation with a man um, that was cheating on me because I liked it. I liked the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but again, my grandmother talked to me and, you know, she don't want to see her grandchild hurting. And, you know, I really love that man. Um, but, you know, coming from not having anything and being with him when I can buy, you know, buy anything I want. And one, you know, coming up, I didn't have anything. So um, by him having all that money, you know, it kind of made me stay. Uh, but over time, as I stayed, it was breaking my heart. I was sad. And sometimes, like they say, 
money ain't everything and uh, it's not. It's all about your happiness. So a young girl is out there and she has to face a future. This is a, this is a, really, this is a really difficult topic, I think. Uh, how can you tell this young girl and, and, and get her to get her to recognize the direction she's going. I mean, from your perspective, it will be very easy for you to look at someone's life now and say, I can see where that's going. Mm -hmm. How can you, how can you, uh, it's like an acting I job, I guess. It. How can well, you look at them and say, you need it, and then they're not receptive. How can, what can you do to affect the change in that person before it even starts? Because you can see the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. um. I try, like in my church, we talk to the youth and I talk to the youth girls and I tell them situations that I have been in and, you know, I give them the real, real um, about life, especially if I see that one or two of them was kind of going in the wrong direction. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta put them to the side and talk to them, say, hey, here's my number, you know, let me talk to you because this is not going to end well. Now, not everybody will listen. Some got to fall and, and hit their head. Um, but, you know, I let them know I'm here for you. You can bump your head, but I'm still right here. You know, I hate that you have to go through it, but um, like I said, some listen, some don't. Um, yeah, it's, and honestly, the kids, these 2021 20, kids, um, it's hard to say anything to them. You can't really correct them. You know, I hear see the kids throwing rocks or using foul language, and you want to stop them and say something to them, but the kids uh, say something back, or uh, half of them, you know, 15, 10, you know, years old, some of them carry guns, so you just don't really bother kids anymore. It's, it's sad to say, but it's true. I was going to ask you just now, how do you, f do you find that this experience has helped you in your acting career? But I think we already answered that question when we saw mm -hmm. the clip that seemed so real mm -hmm. that I was shocked watching it. And when mm -hmm. the gunfire happened, kapow, I literally jumped and it was shocking. Mm -hmm. Really astounding. We'll be right, at, we'll be right back after this. your acting career today, 15 theatrical productions, three features, several sitcoms and some commercials. What is your intended direction now into the future? Um, I want to get back into more writing. I did, um, I wrote a play. It was a small short film. Um, it was an Ain't I Woman play fest. And it was 40 women submitted different plays, all ethics. Um, and I'll end up being out of the eight films that, um, not films, out the eight plays that they selected, um, they selected mine, which is called What's Behind the Mask. And What's Behind the Mask come from my life. This small stories from my life. So it's a true story then, really? Correct. This should be good. Mm -hmm. You should send me a What's copy so I can read it. Yes, I, I sure will. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I, I did um, in writing was called uh, The Letter I Never Sent. And, you know, um, they selected so many letters and I got mine selected. And it was a letter that I wrote to my father, my biological father. And, uh, you know, he watched me grow up. He was a teacher. And... Um, 
he, he watched me grow up and he never spoke to me or said anything to me. Um, he treated me as if I was one of the students, but he knew I was his daughter. Um, and I Did you tried know so he was, hard. He was your dad? I found out when I was seven. So, and how old were you when you, he was the teacher? Um, when I went to junior high school, uh, I was in the ninth grade. It, well, he was a basketball coach when I was in the ninth grade. And he ended up being a high school coach, um, which is 10th tenth, tenth through the 12th. Um, but the, the problem was I had two other siblings that went to school with me. He accepted them, but he wouldn't accept me. And, you know, um, so with him accepting them and not me, I thought something was wrong with me. So, you know, I did things to try to get his attention. You know, um, he's, he did basketball, but I ran track. And I was really good at track. I ended up being um, the AA uh, long jump champion. Um, I did the 100, 200 yard dash. I did, I got a lot of ribbons first place, but yet he will, he will be out there, but he never came up to me and say, good job or, or nothing. I mean, he ignored me as if, you know, that I was nobody to him, but I'm his daughter. Yet the other two that went to school with me, he acknowledged them. And even right now today, um, he had other kids to come out and he accepted them to be his kids, but yet he still don't accept me. I even did the um, the new test. Uh, what's the um, the new test? Uh, accessory test, and um, and it showed that I'm part of their tree. That I'm his daughter. You know, uh, I even yes. took a test with one of my you know siblings, and he said that um, it wasn't a real test. He even tries to deny the science behind it. Mm -hmm. This is why your emotions are right on the edge. It's really obvious. Exactly. This has got to be painful. Um, even today, I mean, it, it bothers you. It's, I can see you talking. You're, you're talking a bit on the halting side. It's a difficult topic. It is. Um, it is. It is. Well, we'll leave it at that right here. It's been a pleasure having you here with me today. I, Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the fact that the uh, domestic violence has become somewhat of a cause for you. Yes. I have a relative who has endured this, and she got divorced, got rid of the situation, mm -hmm. separated her children from it and everything. So for me, it's Good. right at home in that regard. I myself n is, have never been a victim in that way, but... I appreciate that, and I wish you good luck with this Thank career. You. I can see why people will cast you as the bad girl, because not that you're a bad person, but you're mm -hmm. well acquainted with that, and it's easy for you to channel that. Yes, yes. On both a psychological level as well mm -hmm. as a physical level. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wish you good luck on this. and. May the Lord bless you in all of these endeavors and smile on you. Yes, thank you so very much. And may you be blessed as well. I hope so. And send right. advertisers. If your folks are out there saying, we should put some ads on this show, be sure to contact us. Did you know that segue right there? I'm trying to keep it slightly light. This has been a very, very heavy topic, but it's an important topic. These are the mm -hmm. topics that shape people's futures and change their futures and either build them up or destroy them. Here on the show, we want to build up futures. We don't want to destroy people. We want to share the positivity, but sometimes we run into topics that are so sensitive, we just can't pass that up. If you know somebody who is suffering from domestic violence, reach out and talk to somebody. There's a pastor, there's a school principal, there's the police, there's somebody you can talk to out there. I can't personally speak to who you'd call, but obviously the police are one. Your parents are maybe, or your grandma in, in the case of Gwen here. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that is there. You just have to develop the courage and say enough is enough. And this is enough for this show. Until next time, friends, family, and 
all the people I love. I really do. I love you all. Thank you.